Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be going over the stylized filters. So the filters in the stylized folder are kind of self-explanatory. They add some sort of stylistic touch to the image. And the first one is Diffuse. What Diffuse does is it randomly shuffles pixels around by their neighbor pixels based on you can set it to normal or darker pixels overtaking lighter ones or lighter pixels overtaking darker ones. And if you press OK, it'll just kind of soften the focus of your image a little bit. You can't really see what's going on too well until I zoom in and if I just undo, so I'll undo and redo a couple times, you can kind of see what's happening. We're just getting a little bit of shuffling of those pixels around. And if I repeat this a bunch of times, you'll almost see like a fuzzy painting type of effect happen. It just shuffles these pixels around giving us a little bit less focused of an image, more diffused out and spread out of pixels. The next filter we have is the emboss filter. And this gives us a kind of extruded out image of only the edges. It creates a perfect gray fill, and then it takes the edges and it adds the original colors back in there a little bit. So we can change the height, kind of like the separation of that edge, and also the amount, so the strength, and it looks like this image is kind of raised out of the flat background. One way you could use the emboss filter is if I just wanted to raise up those edges a little bit, add a little bit of strength to them, and then I can set the blending mode of that filter since we're using smart filters on a smart object layer. I can set the blending mode to something like overlay, and this will add kind of like a sharpening effect because setting 50% perfect gray on one of these multiplicative blending modes doesn't really affect the contrast since it's perfectly 50% gray. However, we have applied that outline on a bit more contrasted style. So we ultimately get this kind of sharpening effect happening. And you can see before and after we get a little bit of this contrast around the edges. And I can go back in there, maybe change the height if I want it to be a little bit lower and just use the emboss in this way. But again, there's many reasons and ways you could blend the edges of something for a stamped out look. The next filter is really cool, a little bit more easy to see is the extrude filter. So this will allow us to pop out and extrude our image based on a couple options. So we can do blocks or pyramids, and we can choose the size of the pixels and the depth of the pixels and press OK. And this is the result we get from our original photo. It's really cool. It takes it and kind of blows everything out with pixels. So we almost get like this 3D block looking effect. Here's the same thing on the other photo, but this time with the pyramids version rather than the blocks. We see we almost get like more of a 3D extrusion. Next up, we have find edges. This will just kind of trace the edges of the or original image, kind of like the emboss. This could be cool, for example, if we wanted to make a pencil drawing look, I could maybe invert this too to get a different look or, or maybe add a new black and white adjustment layer on top just to desaturate it and give it like a pencil and ink drawing look. So there's lots of different reasons you might just want to trace the edges of a photo. Next up, we have oil paint. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It'll make it look like an oil painting rather than a photograph. So we have options on the stylization strength, the cleanliness of the strokes, the scale and the bristle and the lighting angle. But if I press OK, you'll see everything just gets this smooth, oily look and it adds this brush stroke texture on top of the image, especially look at these trees we get this oil painting look out of them. So this can make photographs seem more like paintings or make water, give water different textures. Interesting filter there. The next filter we have is Solarize. So this is trying to replicate something that would happen when developing film. And basically what it's doing is it's just inverting the brighter half of the photo. So if I actually go to Window Histogram, I can show you what's happening on the graph. This is the original photo and this is what happens, for example, if I invert it completely. You'll see that the chart just flips over. What's black becomes white. The colors flip color channels. We basically just flip all the channels. However, if we do a solarized filter, all we do is we take the right half, the brighter half of the image, and sort of invert that. Another way I can show you this is just with a gradient. 
if I use the solarized filter on this gradient, you'll see what it's doing. It's just inverting the white half of the photo, whereas the invert just inverts. So you can imagine it mostly like that. And that can be a cool technique for different portraits or photographs, just to make the image appear as if it was exposed to light. This is what happens if I invert the solarization. That's another interesting idea. And I'm just using the shortcut image adjustments invert command I to do that. So this could be cool, especially if you maybe even went on to add some color or gradients on top, or maybe colorize the whole thing in some way. The next filter we have is tiles. So this will just break your image up into tiles and fill them with a background color. You could fill them with a back your current background or foreground color, which right now I have black and white as the default, or you could fill them with the inverse image or just leave the original image behind. So I could choose the amount of tiles and the percentage that each one gets offset and press OK and you'll see it offsets your image in these tiles. In this, in this way, I've left the original image behind. I think that's kind of cool. But just to show you again, if we do tiles and let's just do the background color, which is white. Now you see what's happening as well. And 10 is not the number of tiles, but the size of the tiles. The next filter we have is trace contour. This is kind of like find edges, but it just bases it on the levels of the image and it will trace the contour of that level. So if you can imagine like a map where you see the different height map outlines, if I do this on a gradient, in fact, it might give you a good idea. If I just do this on a rainbow gradient and I do the trace contour, you'll see that it, it's tracing the contour of whatever levels I choose. And we can see the edges of each one of those color rings happening. So not only can you do stuff like this on photographs, but it can be cool to create line designs like so. Lastly, we have wind. So this is a cool one. It takes your image and distorts it as if a really strong wind was blowing the pixels out of order. So you have a couple options. You have wind, blast, which is a bit stronger, pixel stretching, and then stagger, which also adds distortion on top. And you can make that come from the right or the left. So if I press OK, you can see this is one application. If I repeat it over a couple times, or if I just did the standard wind, I can just do, let's say, from the right. And if I repeat that over a couple times, just using the shortcut here for Control Command F, just to repeat the last filter that was used, or I can click that button. You see, it's kind of stretching out the colors of this image along the edges. So we get this wind effect here. One cool trick, since the stylized wind filter only allows you right and left options, is to imagine that you just, instead of flipping the wind filter, you can flip your canvas over. You can go to image, image rotation, 90 degrees clockwise, and you can do the same wind filter over and over, except now a wind from the right actually acts like a wind from the bottom. And then all I have to do is go to image, image rotation, and flip it back the other way. And now I was able to apply the wind in a downward drip, even though that's not technically an option. And this can be a very interesting tip for lots of the filters where they only apply in a certain way, is flipping your canvas over and applying them sideways. So keep that tip in your pocket. That's all of the filters in the stylized folder and some interesting examples to use them. In the next episode of the series, we're gonna finish up with the video and other section. So thank you so much for watching. You can check out all the episodes of this in a playlist on my channel and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.